And that's why I like vlogging. Is the cheapest vlogging camera on Amazon worth anything? Let's find out. Welcome back to Reviewing the Cheapest, because there is good tech out there for cheap. So today on Reviewing the Cheapest, we are reviewing the cheapest vlogging camera I could find on Amazon. Now remember the rules of the road for reviewing the cheapest are simple. I don't just buy the random stuff that's on the internet. So the rules of the road are, step one, I go to the website. I type in what I'm looking for. I sort it by price lowest to highest. And if it's on Amazon, I'm probably gonna click Amazon Prime because Amazon Prime's amazing. Let's be honest with each other. So then I scroll through what kind of features I'm looking for. Generally, I want something with at least a 720p so it does not look like hot garbage, even though some of the 720p's end up looking pretty bad too. Uh, so 720p, and then there's a subjective uh, subjective setting to it where I choose what looks like something that I'm looking for. So if it's going to be a cable or some kind of accessory that is not an actual camera, then I don't pick that. I pick the first thing that looks like a camera. So today we have the Vivitar VX X14. It's a 720p point and shoot vlogging camera that absolutely has a screen that you can see yourself in. So if this is your first time here on Reviewing the Cheapest, this video will be broken down into five parts. The unboxing, the review, comparison to current tech, should you buy it, and will I keep it? So let's get started. I found my scissors. If you saw my DJI Spark video where I said I lost them, I, I found them. All right, this one's gonna be easier than the rest because it does not have a box. It's gonna be hard to return it if I decide to not keep it because it doesn't have a box. Vivitar might have been smarter than me on that one. We'll try to keep all the pieces together in case we Oh, was there something in there? It's got a CD. Windows XP. Oh, this is, this is too good. So one of the best parts about reviewing the cheap is you get to be reminded about all the old technology that you don't remember. This disc is compatible with Windows XP, SP3, Vista, Service Pack 1, Windows 7, and Mac OS 10. I, if you're a Mac user, tell me if that's any good or not. I don't, I've never used a Mac. Windows 7. So again, not compatible with Windows 10. So let's, let's see. It could be a really short review. All right, so let's get the disc out of the way. And this plastic bit out of the way. All right, we gotta keep cutting. I'm trying to cut as little as possible on the off chance that I don't wanna keep this camera. Okay, there's the camera. What else comes in this box? Okay, we got some instructions in, looks like French, French instructions, English instructions, and troubleshooting instructions. All right. Uh, as per usual, I will not be reading any of this. All right, it comes with a little strap, USB mini cord, and a Vivitard We Make Fun warranty certificate. Definitely need to get the warranty for the VX X14. So this camera cost me $25. It claims to be a 20 megapixel camera that can film in 720p. It does have a, you know, a reversible screen, which some really good cameras don't have. So I really wanted to make sure I had this if I'm going to say it's a vlogging camera. You know, if you're maybe not technically vlogging, but even just making videos like on my. So having the rear facing camera really helps. And it's not just for vlogging, like even on my here, I'll show you even on my Panasonic G7 that I've got here. I have the rear facing screen because it just helps me frame the shot. Don't pay attention to my workout bike there. I probably should clean that up. So like I said, it claims to be a 20 megapixel camera that can take HD 720p film. We'll try that out. So it looks like it's got, like I said, the rear facing screen. It's got a power button, cord button, a zoom in. It has a four times digital zoom. Probably, well, I mean, we'll see how good it is, but probably not very good mode. It's got some settings and it's got a spot for an SD card right there in the bottom. So that's good. And it has a tripod mount screw there on the bottom. It looks like it has a, a little bit of a, a wee baby flash. Oh, we got to take the, there we go. Took the sticker off. Looks like it's got a wee baby flash and it says a digital lens F equals seven millimeter F 3.0. Like I say on my normal videos, I'm not a camera guy. I don't know what that means, but I hope it means something to you. All right, pretty, pretty small point and shoot. It is kind of winning right now. Now I've been reviewing the cheapest here. This is my third reviewing the cheapest. None of them have taken a standard battery, so I didn't even think about, hey, maybe I should get standard batteries and triple A's. I'm beaten, I'm beaten right now. So we'll, we'll pause real quick. I'll go find some triple A's and we'll continue the review. All right, welcome back. We found some batteries that'll teach me to not actually look at the packaging beforehand. Super professional outfit here on reviewing the cheapest. 
All right, we turned it on. Vivitar makes fun. Okay, we're gonna set it up real quick. Yes, we would like to continue with setup. Please set the time and date. Um, wow, 2016, I guess it would be 2016. That's way farther than I thought it would be. Confirm Vivi photo and video social network site. Uh, Facebook, Twitter. I'm impressed that it has all these settings, that it actually knows what Facebook, Twitter, Photo Bucket, Flickr, Picasa albums? None. Vivilink for video, YouTube, yep, YouTube. Congratulations, your camera is ready to use. Congratulations. Obviously not a touchscreen for a $25 camera. Even though the $12 action camera had a touchscreen. Let's put the SD card in it. You know, that, that doesn't look too bad. That actually, I am, again, cautiously optimistic that this might actually turn into an HD camera. All right, so we got the screen going. You can see it. It actually doesn't look too bad. All right, it's got all the auto white balance stuff, digital lens, auto. Okay, it's got all sorts of uh, some white balance settings. Image resolution, you can go between 20 megapixels down to VGA, VGA strikes back. That's two weeks in a row of VGA. Image quality, ooh, let's do super fine. Self timer, no self timer, anti-shake. Hey, so it's got some kind of stabilization, which is probably some kind of electronic image stabilization we've talked about before. I prefer optical image stabilization, but for this tiny camera, I'd take any stabilization. All right, anti-shake on, multi-snapshots, white balance, color effect, vivid, image sharpness, Sharp. Light exposure, normal, ISO, metering, language, date time, silent mode, auto power off, frequency, format memory card, firmware. Gotta make sure you've got your Vivitar firmware up to date. Something else I just noticed, it has a macro mode. So it should be able to do pretty close up stuff. Um, it's got a macro that goes 10 to 30 centimeters. And it's other mode, macro off, which is 1.5 meters to infinity of, of focus. This doesn't have autofocus or anything like that, you have to manually. It doesn't have any kind of focus. It has focus of 10 to 30 centimeters or 1.5 meters to infinity. There's no in between. The zoom's awful. The zoom is just terrible. Don't use the zoom. So next what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this on a tripod right next to my G7 and we'll compare the image quality of both cameras. Got it on the Gorillapod. Straight up vlogging style. All right, so we got both cameras set up. This is the Vivitar. XX14. This is my Panasonic Lumix G7. I've also unplugged the Rode microphone from my G7 so we can do an audio test. So this is the audio from the Vivitar XX14. And this is the audio from the Panasonic Lumix G7. The Vivitar's microphone is facing the front so it definitely is designed to capture that audio from the front. And I'm really quite impressed with the rear facing screen. Uh, it it does not have a lot of lag. It has a very, it looks like a good image. If the image looks this good, uh, when I check out the footage here in a second, I may seriously be recommending this as somebody's first vlogging camera because it's a nice compact design. I really like all the features it has. It has a lot of controls that give you some manual control over the image. I mean, it's nothing like a mirrorless camera or a DSLR. But for a tiny point and shoot that's dirt cheap, we'll have to see. But like last week, I was also cautiously optimistic, so we need to we need to see how it looks. So let's check it out. All right, so we got the footage up from the Vivitar camera behind me. I don't think it's too bad. I think for a tiny little point and shoot that costs 25 bucks, that's a very respectable, both in the audio quality and the video quality. It's not gonna be 1080p, it's not gonna be 4K, it's not gonna match what uh, this is being filmed on because this is a changeable lens mirrorless camera that can do 4k but this this is not bad i'm actually quite impressed but what really makes me impressed is the rear facing screen a lot of decent cameras and even some point and shoots that are in the hundred dollar range don't have the rear facing camera it's, it's really hard to frame your shot without this screen for the first few months of my channel i shot most of my video on my iphone so i had this thing called the iographer this success lets you mount your phone on a tripod it lets you use microphones it's got a shoe mount it, it has all sorts of great things but the problem with this is that you can't frame your shot because there's no way to tell where it's filming uh, so that's one of the great things about this versus a camera that does not have that. The next test is going to be we're going to take this outside. Uh, we're going to see how good the stabilization works and how good the vlogging capabilities work against my normal vlogging setup, which is this is my normal vlogging setup. Here is where my Rode Micro goes. It's on the Panasonic right now. I actually I got this idea to you know show credit where it's due. I got this idea from iPhone though. I'll leave a link to his channel on the bottom, but. 
His setup is kind of like this, and so I, I found a way to design this in a 3D printer and printed it out, so it, it actually works pretty well. Um, but we'll compare the two. This obviously is my favorite camera of all time, but I'm going to give the Vivitar a fair shake, and we'll just see how stable it is while we're walking around. So, see you there. So we're wandering around out here, both cameras have their stabilization on. We're only going to use the audio from the Sony because it's got the microphone. Uh, we already did the audio test inside, but... Oh, so the screen's kind of hard to see with the sun. I can kind of make out a shadow of my face, but that's about it. And yeah, we'll compare how the stabilization on both cameras go. This is the Sony, obviously, and this is the Vivitar. You can kind of see it. We'll see how good the quality is, but but again, I really like the rear-facing screen. It's a handy little point-and-shoot, um, and if the stabilization is any good, I'm I don't see myself having any problem recommending this camera. We'll have to see how the focus is, since it doesn't have it doesn't even have a way to manually focus it. So you just kind of got to guess where you're at between the 1.5 meters to infinity for focusing. So if it stays in focus, the stabilization is decent probably gonna recommend this let's go back inside because it's really hot because it's a Georgia summer right back we're back inside after the stabilization and vlogging test outside uh, final thoughts stabilization is not too bad I checked out the video it I mean there's some shakiness to it but there's some shakiness to all handheld cameras you can't get away from it unless you have a camera specifically designed to not shake or you have some kind of gimbal to take this shake out for ultimate smoothness uh, I didn't do a lot of ninja walking or steady walk, or as we saw on the film, I think it's okay. For comparison, I'm not gonna... I think it's unfair to compare it to my Panasonic G7. That's not a fair comparison. So as it's a vlogging camera, and the camera I use for vlogging is my Sony Action Cam, I'm gonna compare the two. So yes, the Sony Action Cam, like we talked about last week, is my favorite camera of all time. But a big thing, especially when it comes to vlogging, is it doesn't have that rear screen. I can't say how much this helps. It helps out so much, and not just so that I can see how pretty I look, but it really helps just trying to, oh, am I actually in the shot? There's a lot of footage I waste when I use this because it's not the shot I want. And the rear facing screen really helps. So this has a lot of stabilization. This stabilization wasn't terrible. I don't think it's very good. I. I would hesitate to call it a stable camera. I think it's just a setting they put on there just to say that it's on there. But it's a, I think this is a respectable point and shoot for dirt cheap. So should you buy it? I would recommend you buy this camera if you're trying to start a YouTube channel or you want to take some home videos and you don't currently have a camera. Uh, yes, cell phone cameras are better than this, but it takes an SD card, which my iPhone does not. So when I run out of space on that, I run out of space on that. This takes an SD card so it, it can do almost as much footage as I'm willing to carry cards on and it has that rear facing screen. That rear facing screen is what makes a vlogging camera or what makes a camera able to do stuff by itself. If you have a cameraman, you don't really need to worry about it as much because they get to see, okay, they're in the shot, they're in the shot. But when you're a one person show like the Everyday Dad, you need this rear facing screen to just set up the shot. I mean, sometimes it can be distracting because if you're looking at it, instead of talking into the camera, you know, people will be like, oh, you're not really making eye contact with anybody. But I would recommend this for somebody wanting to start a YouTube channel. The video quality is not terrible. The audio is not great, but it's doable. I mean, I would say you could start a YouTube channel with this camera. Highly recommend it. It's the Vivitar VX X14, found it on Amazon for 25 bucks. Final comment, will I keep it? I probably will not keep this camera. I already have my main camera. I already have a vlogging camera. I just gave the everyday kid the action camera from last week. I probably won't end up giving this to him just because it he's pretty rough on cameras. The the biggest complaint I have with this thing is this rear this joint right here feels pretty fragile. I mean it's all made of plastic. There's no there's no like metal construction out of this $25 camera. So if you are gonna get this camera, be gentle with it. Uh, I think it would probably be better for just handheld stuff or to set up on a tripod. But hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you like learning new things or checking out the cheapest technology, click that subscribe button down below. We do cheap technology videos every Monday. Uh, we've been on a camera kick. I think we've got something really awesome for next week that I'm excited to come in. It's an actual drone that should really fly instead of the original one we did. I got it off of BH Photos. So we're going to take a break from the Amazon 
check out some other cheap internet sites. When you click that subscribe button, also click the bell notification icon right next to it. If you don't click that bell, you may not get all the updates from the channel. Well, hey, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure out that this is actually probably a decent starter or kid vlogging camera, and it's the cheapest you can get, you can figure it out. Thanks for watching.